All right, so this is the the new flight model panel. So the need for multiple speeds, journey to 4.0. Let's uh let's really watch this one and pay attention to it because this is uh, important for literally everybody um in Star Citizen. We all use our ships and how we use them and all that stuff is important. Probably the most important panel we had Hi, my name the whole is show. Flat. I'm a gameplay programmer in the vehicle feature team. I'm here with Rich Towler, David Colson, Jet Talbot, and Johnny Young. And today we're gonna talk to you about the upcoming changes to the flight systems and the combat systems. So uh, Johnny Young is Younger Games in chat. Uh, he's been here before. Uh, which I don't specifically for Squadron 42, but which will eventually find the way to the Persistent Universe. That's the first one, is the eventually find the way into the Persistent Universe, and he'll touch on just how difficult that will be later. We want to define uh, ship roles for the game because every role in itself and every ship can offer unique gameplay opportunities for individual players. We want to provide a lot more variety to the gameplay in Star Citizen. A lot By the way, what the fuck is this hair? As somebody who probably doesn't have any hair in, in Twitch chat, maybe we shouldn't comment on the way people look. Okay, come on. A lot more opportunity for different careers, different responsibilities, and different sort of Be respectful. perspectives and views on gameplay where people contribute different types of work and different types of jobs. Star Citizen is supposed to be a big expansive game with giving the players lots of chances to have a variety I have the post of different experiences. It's not just about combat, it's not just about an economy, it's not just about piracy, it's about all of those things happening at the same time. So we need ships that can act and function in different ways to support all of those different goals. In trying to figure out these roles and define what they are and make the gameplay for them, we've started very heavily leaning toward combat, mostly because combat is a mechanic that is very widely applicable throughout the game. And the Why principles is, uh, behind it apply up. to various other roles in the game. We've been working um, away in the S42 branch, um, and this has really allowed us to isolate these ships. So we've kind of broken it down into archetypes, and it's really allowed us to, to, to kind of break down what these ships do. you know. And also it's to make sure that when we are defining these roles and balancing these roles, that we're putting the ships in the right place, because we don't want the ships to be like, you play this ship, it means you dominate this part of the game. That there's always got to be plus and minuses so the balance is right. So there's still some crossover between the ships. So just picking one type of ship just isn't, you know, isn't just a win. We have already defined. They're they're trying to kill the the light fighter meta that has been in existence for nearly the entire time, right? Several ship roles, and they're usually known as light, medium, and heavy fighters. Light fighters for us are fighters which are very dominant in the area of one versus one uh, PvP combat. But they come with a downside because obviously the light which means the materials chosen on the ship are probably not the strongest. So it's more about the attack. It's more about trying to out position and get in there and attack and get out of the situation. Heavy fighters are kind of the opposite. They are not supposed to be really good at one versus one, versus one but they excel at uh, N versus N engagements. So when we have group battles. Medium fighters for us, uh, internally we call multi-role fighters because they have a lot of hard points. So they have a lot of loadout flexibility. So a player can tune them to the role, whatever they want, but they will never reach the performance of dedicated ships. A lot of medium- Man, it's that, it still sounds like medium fighters are gonna suck. So like your Hornet, your Saber, like it, it feels like all those are still, they're, they're like strictly PVE ships, you know? Like that's the, the sad thing for me at least is I think the community probably loves the medium fighters the most, but the fact that they kind of really glanced over medium fighters is so far the most disappointing thing that I've heard so far because Saber and the Hornet are my two favorite ships. It they, they, like looks wise and feel wise and all that stuff. I hope I'm wrong, but just the way he explained it was like, never gonna be as good as these and also never gonna be as good as these so like what what are they good at and what do, what do we use them for it just sounds like pve to me medium fighters sometimes come with a turret as well so they've got that additional gameplay of the turret which is aimed to kind of counter the lack of maneuverability that their ships have 
And then additionally to that, we have racing ships, which are basically just really fast at changing the velocity uh, vectors. And um, interceptors. This is going to have a massive effect on racing. We basically just want to go racing. very fast in the forward area, but never reaching really the performance envelope of dedicated dogfighters. Interceptors are designed to kind of catch up to ships and disable them. Um, so they come with kind of advanced kind of you know, hardware on these ships. Bombers, on the other hand, are, um, well, they're just slobbing heavy ordnance at larger targets. So you use them to take out bigger ships, um, but they're not really good at well, killing small fighters. And then from smaller ships coming to larger ships like Constellation and up, we want to change the gameplay to be less about positional combat, but more going into the naval style of combat, where it's important to show the correct shield and fire arcs and timing your shots uh, over long distances. So the purpose of ship rules is to really help players understand what ships should be used and when they should be used. And it's really about delivering on those kind of gameplay promises that we've been talking about you know, over the past you know, kind of several years. If every yeah. ship is the same, it's not fun. But if we have dedicated ships with dedicated pros and cons, then we can create very exciting combat environments. And the biggest challenge we see in order to get that gameplay we want is the current speed that we have in combat. Here we go. This is anytime any player, especially like the bigger PvP players, have argued to have certain things, um, they immediately go, like they being CIG and this specific team go, hold on, uh, we think that when we lower the speeds, it will have a positive effect on what you think is negative. So all this time has led up to this moment. Everybody's comments, everybody's feedback, everybody, they seemed unwilling to listen or unwilling to make any sweeping changes until they've done this. I'm not going to sit here and say that this is the answer. I don't know. I think most of us know that my experience in, in ship combat and specifically PVP is incredibly low, even though I am the reigning second place champion at the fight or flight tournament, just saying, and rolled to the finals without having a single death, just saying, okay. Just saying. I'm just kidding. Uh, like, I had a great teammate, okay? But really, this is something that they've been incredibly unwilling to budge about until they did this. So this is the big change that they want to make and, and really just didn't want to listen to the community until they did it. It's a subject we've talked about many, many times in the past. And it's something we've tried many things with. You know, we've tried limiting things at speed. We've tried adjusting handling at speed. We've, just, we've tried so many things to kind of manage the negative impact of speed on combat. When ships are going fast in combat, they usually just end up very far apart, which is not very interesting. And it just devolves into jousting very quickly, which is also not very interesting. The yes. second you create a longer distance between you and the target, your angular requirements to maneuver to that target are just, are just extremely small. And this is a very obvious math reason why high-speed combat is kind of the opposite of what we want to achieve, meaning meaningful and effective positional maneuvering. We want the combat to be closer and to be more turn-oriented, so rotations should matter. And when he says turn-oriented, I've watched like a couple of DCS videos. It's all turn-oriented, right? It's all about the how quickly your ship can turn versus how quickly their ship can turn. But there's obviously like way more detail to it um, than that. Like some do better in this kind of thing and the others do better in others. And there's, yeah. So, but there's some ships that like a 1v1, you just so win in just DCS or something. Speed. I don't know. Having very don't have much experience. speeds that are pretty much the same between all ship classes negates a lot of the opportunity for smaller ships to flex different types of gameplay. Someone in chat says, uh, it will again take years to balance the new flight model. Well, well, they have years, you know, nothing's happening anytime soon, but the, if this is what they're going with, then they, they can actually start balancing. That's part of the problem is they haven't yet. Another big issue with the speeds in combat is it's very hard to keep players engaged in the combat because players can move so far so quickly. 
in such a short space of time, it's quite hard to keep a track on your opponent. So you might jump town. Oh, why don't we just make the ship slower? Think jump town. You start out fighting up just above jump town, and within two minutes, you're sixty kilometers from jump town in space. It, it was terrible. We're and call it a day. Well, we can't do that. The main reason we can't just make everything slower is the size of the Star Citizen world. We've got huge planets where we need to go from the planet's surface up into space. We need to transverse between different systems. So essentially, we can't have just low speeds all of the time. There's a massive universe out there to explore. There's planets to explore. And the feelings we want to capture with the speed, we still want an element of danger that you can still go too fast in lots of situations. We have tried an awful lot uh, over the past few years with what would what are called soft speed caps, where there is no speed cap on ships, but we encourage gameplay to occur at a lower. That gave me so much anxiety that that little video there of like trying to find the shit, the Gladius in the Hornet, and you just can't find it because they just maneuver so much faster than you. Speed, but it doesn't really work because. The advantages of flying fast in terms of defense is just better. So since the last year, the focus of the Eco Feature team shifted very heavily towards Squadron 42 and nailing down the flight and space combat experience for it. And I'm very proud to say that we finally found a really good working solution that we're gonna show today. Okay. So the main idea is to simply not have combat and long-range travel uh, at the same time. So we're splitting these gameplay experiences. This will be done by a thing which is called master modes. A master mode is a thing that is globally applied to your ship. Um, and we have two of them. We have SCM, which is now relabeled as uh, standard control mode, and QCM or QM for quantum mode. The idea is that between these two modes, we can constrain the speeds in combat and also get all of the maneuvering, like high speed maneuvering and traversal mechanics that we had before, but in these distinct modes that are integrated with lore and integrated with the ship functions, such that there's costs and payoffs for being in each of the two modes. So let's start with standard control mode um, and what this means. So this is the mode that we intend to be the functional mode of the ship, whether it's combat or mining or any of these kind of core kind of things the ship does. We want the player to do these things in this mode. And what this does is, is it reduces the speed of the ship, but it also enables the shield to be turned on. And obviously the intent behind this is, this is where you do your combat. It's where the guns are on, the missiles can be armed and fired, and all the kind of operational things the ship does operates within this mode. The I think that's like the biggest overarching change is that the shield is off when you're not in SCM mode. The shield is on when you are. And uh, same with weapons, same with uh, with uh, countermeasures they mentioned laser, later, like anything involving combat is just off. Um, this is probably the most polarizing thing. I'm already seeing it in the Twitch chat. Uh, this is a bad idea. This is a good, good idea. Uh, there's other opportunities here as well, right? Think of um, situations where... Um, you shouldn't be in an area with weapons on and stuff like that. I don't know. You could switch modes and stuff. I don't know. I, I'm. This is one that I definitely think we need to get in our hands and see how it feels and see how the uh, the geniuses that we have in our community will find ways to abuse it or uh, break it and all that stuff. Because and I mean geniuses in in the most positive way possible. Because these guys will will destroy the system and break it. I'm sure. The speeds that you can reach in SCM are somewhat limited, somewhere between two and three hundred meters per second, tuning, uh, tuning pending. Um, I love that. But the, this is basically the hard cap, which you the cannot. The whole bar is SCM really in SCM You can mode. slightly exceed this. Fine using, control uh, with boost, your throttle, but you cannot maintain any velocity beyond that SCM limit for a longer period of time. So we're thinking of this as some kind of energy management system. So you can go a little bit faster with a little bit more accelerations when you need to, but you know that you it is a limited resource uh, and you should use it carefully. Specifically, the boost space is interesting for, for space combat because that boost spa space is not, is not spheric as it was before. You can boost the fastest if, you, uh, if you're going forward on a straight line and you have a lot of debuffs when you're trying to boost backwards. That alone gets us a lot of interesting maneuvering space and variation in the day-to-day -day dogfight maneuvering, so to speak. 
important. What are the debuffs when you boost backwards? Like, I'm a little confused by that. That's clearly intending to remove the current meta, which is just backstrafing all the time, apparently, right? You don't have your quantum drive available in this mode. The idea. Because you need the backstrafe to slow yourself down. Um, how will that affect that? How will that affect like a, a really bad pilot that comes flying in at a thousand meters per second, like myself, that just back boosts to slow down? Does it does it not flip one eighty? Yeah, but what if I don't want to? Then I crash, just fly better. Well, this is going to be a rough couple of years for me. Yeah. Is that quantum is restrained to the quantum traversal mode. The second okay. mode is quantum control mode or QCM or QM. What this mode does is it unlocks your maximum velocity that your ship can reach. So when you were limited before to 200 to 300 meters per second, now you can go to 1200, 1400 meters per second, whatever your ship allows you. During the development um, of the um, quantum mode, we realized we needed something that was a little bit more kind of about traveling large distances, but not the distances that you need to, you know, speed up your quantum drive and travel across the universe. So we've created this feature called Quantum Boost, which is available in the quantum mode, and you can access it at any point. I like so at this. any point you want to kind of boost towards your location that you, you know, you're kind of looking at, but it's just a too far away. And this boost is available for a limited amount of time, and it's purely on a straight line. Just to give you like But a, it's not purely on a straight line. We see it later where i think in the in the cr interview at, at the end where uh you are in control of this ship and you have to stay within the circle for it to work effectively or you'll get knocked out of quantum boost it, it's actually quite a cool little feature a ballpark quantum boost will allow you to go to a target fast if it's within let's say 50,000 kilometers whereas you will use quantum travel to do very long range jumps between with between planets so uh quantum mode allows you to go very very fast with up to like 12 see i like how unsteady it is but i really would have liked the elite dangerous style where we had a much much more control but okay 1400 meters per second when you want to zip really fast over a planet it also allows you to do quantum boost to quickly go between points of interest which are rather close to you and it allows you to go to travel long distances between uh, between planets and, and large-scale stellar objects but it comes at a cost your capacitor systems are non-functional because they interfere with the quantum bubble that is allowing you to go fast you won't have shields your shields will will collapse right away when you when you uh, when you swap into quantum mode. Your weapons will stop working because anything that's firing outwards of your ship will disintegrate the quantum bubble. Your countermeasures won't work, and you will also not be able to use thruster boost. So basically, all your capacity. Okay, so nothing works when you're in quantum mode. Are you ready? Um, this was posted by Yogi. Um, just to give some extra reference to this. Uh, we didn't have time to cover all aspects of the changes. Here's some details on the shield interaction. When you swap SCM to QCM, your shields will not instantly blink away. I'm not sure if it showed in the video, but uh, they collapse fluently while the quantum drive spools up. So if the mode swap has achieved 50%, your shields will be down by 50%. However... The shield health you had before is not completely lost, but dumped into a reserve pool. The max amount being a property of the equipped shield generators, where it remains while you are in QCM. When you swap back to SCM, that shield health is immediately pumped back into the shield faces. So there, some people had issues with, uh, if you're familiar with size three shields, uh, somebody said it's six minutes for your 890 jump shields to recharge. Six minutes, this will not be the case. You will not be left out with nothing when you come out of quantum travel. So your shields will go down and then they will come right back up to where they were if they weren't knocked down by some form of combat. So if they were knocked down by 50%, it, it's, a nice, it's a nice solution. So uh, I think some people had some concerns with that. This is a much uh, clearer kind of point of view for that one so hopefully that helps you guys and uh 
Yeah, let's get back to the video. Combat-related systems are turned off instantly. Yeah, they're when stored. You they don't modes, go down. There'll be a little period of time where everything has to spool up and change. So you will lose your shields during this. You won't have your weapons during this, but you also won't be going fast. So there's a, a risk reward element when you need to switch modes. So it's gonna be a very kind of conscious choice of what mode you should be in at any particular point. So if you feel the threat of another someone that's close by, you're not quite sure what their intention is, maybe switch to standard control mode and be safe. Or literally a copy of ED system again. Escape. We shouldn't make fun and of that. We gonna... should we should be praising that. Looking at solutions that work elsewhere very well and bringing them into the game where where it works. Star Citizen has been trying to reinvent everything for so long that it, it's uh yeah, it's it's caused the issue where we are and today. Kind of bringing an element of danger and an element of risk. Because uh going into the two different modes is like a systemic thing within the ship's items. Um, we actually have the opportunity now to define ship roles that can block people from escaping, either using devices that suppress the quantum bubble or devices that can effectively interfere with your ability to transfer between the modes. For example, specific ships like interceptors can be tuned such that they have a higher standard control mode speed, so they're able to catch up with people. Or, for example, make the swap between the modes faster and more efficiently so that they could catch up with you, go into standard control mode and attack you more effectively as per the properties of their ship versus another ship which might not be as good at doing something like that. Okay, I find that to be the most interesting part of the entire talk is the way that they want to utilize different ships to um, combat people running away. Uh, we obviously have quantum interdictors at the moment. It sounds like they might change that role a little bit, especially the one that said maybe ways to prevent the swap from happening. That one is really cool. We have e-warships, right? So you can start seeing the potential for those and start seeing the roles that things like the, um, who, I don't know, the Vanguard Sentinel may have, right? Stuff like that. EMP missiles, all sorts of things. We can start to see how we now have a good base of something that might be fun. Uh, again, I say might be because we don't have it in our hands. We don't know. And then they could build upon and add layers and layers and layers and make more and more interesting. It feels like there's some potential here, but again, we won't know until it's we play that's it. fundamentally changed the gameplay experience for us. And this is working now, um, you know, and we're playing it every day in the studio. We're refining it. We're tweaking bits here and there. Um, but we're at that stage now where we're tweaking and balancing. And we've got the core features. It's there in the game playable. And the difference it's made on the game for us is it's basically night and day. Because the speeds have been limited in standard control mode, suddenly fights are a lot closer. The accelerations of ships similarly have been retuned a little bit and their afterburner strength has been retuned a little bit to make it so that you can orbit around ships and have a lot more interesting maneuvering. Um, and because the ranges are closer, maneuvers that would be performed by your ship have a much more significant impact because you're closer. So if I like thrust up or down, you'll immediately see the difference. So similarly, things like capital ships uh, effectively get a buff to their offensive capabilities with this change. This is a big part as well. You can't orbit a capital ship at high range and high speeds. Um, you have to get a lot closer, which will make the turrets much more effective at shooting you. Turrets become more important and working as a group to attack capital ships is more important than it has been. Yeah, it, it makes the roles of other ships like um, the, I don't know, the, uh, oh, what is it called? The Ares and the bombers and things like that. Uh, you, you, you would need them to take out these ships. This is a really exciting change because it allows us to keep the combat speeds relatively low where we know that the gameplay is better for that while also keeping the point to point travel speeds as high as they should be for PU. Playing with Master Modes in Squadron 42 has been a lot of fun simply because it's changed the entire combat experience. Before you'd find that you were fighting at a huge distance, now you find that you're in really tight close combat with the other players. I think 
the biggest part of this is going to be when we have the larger ships interacting with the smaller see, ships. See, see. Once we can have battles with big capital ships and smaller ships, we'll have brought something to the Star Citizen world that I don't think has been as come out before. Uh, and I think it'll make a massive improvement to the game. Having made these changes so. uh, to implement master modes and rebalancing all of the ship speeds, uh, we'll finally be able to define ship roles in the way that we've always wanted and to bring a lot more variety to the gameplay that we haven't had before. So it's been a really long journey here, obviously, because you've been a part of this journey. Um, you know, and we've tried many, many different things over the time to try and really yes, create you the have. experience we want. But, <laughs> you know, the reality is from us, it came down to you know, what it always is in Star Citizen, which is creating choice for the players. It's about giving players the option. Why did they see that Centurion from so far out? It looked like a scanning mode thing. Did you notice that? That's a little Easter egg, probably. Look at how far away they're seeing that Centurion. This is either something related to a mission or... Yeah, very... 1,500 meters. Do you see Centurions that far? It's a ground vehicle. It came down to you know, what it always is in Star Citizen, which is creating choice. It's the bug? The okay. It's about giving players the option and their choices have consequences. Oh, the owner you know, marker. So gotcha, gotcha. Really yeah. helps Thank you. It helps define the player choice in the game. So they're choosing to do combat. They're choosing to travel from here to be in Quantum. They're choosing to QT boost somewhere. Just giving players that freedom within the universe we have is just like it's a really magical thing. And we try many times to control that as you know, as designers to try and get a specific experience at some point. But we always end up coming back to the fact, let's just give the players the choice and let them make the key decisions and we'll design the balance around that. We finally have it. So we're, we're now nailing down the space combat experience for Star Citizen, specifically for Squadron 42. We know from internal playtest that the master mode stuff works. We know that it works with our uh, flight retunings and it's okay. very exciting. It will yet take a while to ship this to the PU because the amount of ships you fly in Squadron 42 is rather limited, whereas in Star Citizen we have about, I don't know, more than 100 ship records at the moment. But the whole hard problem of designing this thing in the first place is over. We just need to get the numbers in now. And all the footage you've seen today is from Squadron. Um, it's all currently playable in the game. And they just need to get the basic numbers in. Then they have to do all the layering that they want to do with components and weapons and all that stuff. We have a long time before we're going to experience this the way it probably should be. And that, you know, internally, that, you know, we're playing this every day. We're still making some tweaks, but everything is there right now. It's all about the foundational kind of tweaks that we're making. Um, and we can't wait to get it in your hands. So thanks a lot for listening to us today. We're very, very excited to get the changes to you as soon as possible. And yeah, we'll hope to see you fighting in the verse. Oh, God, that sounds so like, yeah, we hope to see you fighting in the verse, but <laughs> I don't think we're going to be fighting in the verse anytime soon based on this, uh, unfortunately. So I like all the changes. That was probably the the most positive change out of everything and um yeah we'll have to see but i don't have much to add to it i other than we need this in our hands as soon as possible whether you have only i, I don't know how to do it I, I guess we just have to wait for them to literally tune everything but we need this in our hands as soon as possible so we don't have to talk about what it might be like. We can actually experience it. It's it's just time, but at the same time, it sounds like it is going to be a big slog to uh to get there.